Okay, so ready to start uh, programming paradigms again. Now, uh, somebody was just asking right before we rolled the camera about MAP. I thought I had demoed MAP before, but maybe not. So I think what we'll do is, I think for your programming assignment tonight, you have to do, what, something called MyMap? Is that right? Okay, so let me show you how MAP works. We'll start with that demo. Okay. Okay, so here uh, we are. At the end of class last time, we had done the interleave, and let's just do an example real quick. Interleave, interleave, quote, A, B, C, and, quote, D, E, F. I think that's what we did last time. And you see how it interleaves, A, D, B, E, C, F. And then we went through the slides and saw how that worked. Okay, so now, the next thing that we want, that we want to ask is, how about shuffle? Now that we know how to interleave, how do we shuffle? Now watch how shuffle works. S-H-U-F-F-L-E is the name of the function. And we're going to do A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. And now the thing about shuffle that's a little uh, not so user friendly is we have to s have an integer that says how big, how long the list is, the length of the list. What's the length of this list? Six, so we actually have to give it six. So, oh, so, oh wait, uh, yes, we have to give it six, the length. All right, and so now that we know that the length is, now that we give it, the, what do you suppose, can you predict what this is going to be? You, can you predict what's going to happen when I return? I mean, what does shuffle do? You know how to shuffle the cards of a deck? How do you shuffle the cards of a deck? You take the what? You take the top half, you separate it from the bottom half, and then you, what do you do? Boom, yeah, you interleave them. So what do you suppose shuffle's gonna do? A, D, B, E, C, F. Yes, that's exactly right. A, D, B, E, C, F. A, D, B, E, C, F. Is everybody clear on what shuffle does? Okay, so now can you tell me how would you write shuffle now that we know how interleave works? Define shuffle. How many parameters does it take? Two. Two. So what would the next line be? List. Well, we'll call it deck because the deck is the analogy of a what? A deck of cards. All right. And, then we, and, we, and we have to give it the size. That's just the way it is. And now, you guys, what should we do? What should this shuffle do? What do we need to figure out? Yeah, we have to separate the list in half. So what should we do with size? I think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use a let statement here. So how should we define half? Size divided by two. Size divided by two. Right. So we're, it's going to be let. So is everybody clear on this? It's actually size plus one. Because it might be have an odd number. Okay. So we'll let, we'll let half be defined as the quotient of size plus one divided by two. Sorry, of size plus one divided by two, which is what the quotient gives us. Is everybody good with this? All right, so now that we know what half is, now, my, now how did interleave work? Do you remember, oh, you know what we should have done? We should have, we, do you guys remember how to take the first half and the second half of a list? Do you remember the, the um, wasn't there like a, didn't we write a first elements of? Yes. How did that work? First elements of, and it was like, is, how did that work? It, was that like three and then, if you did, and then A, B, Is this it? Yeah. And then what does the, what will this return? ABC. A, B, C. And then there was a built-in one that wasn't it like list tail or something? Yeah. Remember that? And that was the weird one. How did that work? List tail. Now, how did list tail work? It was. And remember, we said, oh, that was a little funny. Well, for one thing, you put the the number at the end, but remember how this one worked? 
Did it give you the last three or did it give you? It gave you the ones after the first one. Yeah, it gave you the one, yes. It gave you the tail after the first three. Remember, so that was D, E, F, G, H. So, but anyway, with these first elements of and list tail, we can write shuffle. I think that these will help us write shuffle. So now, so now what do we have to shuffle? Uh, well, I just said it. <laughs> can, you, can you write this? How would you write this code? So now that we know, now that we know, what is half? Half is like an integer that is the number in each half. Right? So what would we, so how do, how do we shuffle? We interleave. Exactly. We interleave what? Um, first elements of um, half, half and, deck. and deck. So we interleave the first elements of half and deck. Excellent. Do you see how once you get this, you can just say it and do and it. Code just writes itself. Okay, so interleave first elements of half and, and we interleave that with what? List tail. With list tail of what? Deck half. Deck half. Excellent. Does everybody see how shuffle works? Why, uh, why do you have to do size plus one? Well, because in case they're odd, you know, in case there's an odd number. Six plus one. I mean, you always yeah. Mm hmm. Well, no, no. I mean, the, it works whether you have an even number or an odd number. So, so suppose there's seven. You want half to be. If there's seven, you want half to be four. Right. But if you had six, you it would four. still be three. Yeah. Oh, six. Six plus one divided by three is is still a uh, quotient. Is still uh, six. Oh, sorry, it's still three. Quotient rounds down. Yes. Yes. Remember, it's quotient and remainder. That was a good question. Are you with me? All right. Okay, and now you guys, what happens when you play cards with somebody? If you're playing cards with somebody, yeah, mm -hmm. you win. <laughs> Just because you're a good card player, you're a good poker player. Okay, so yeah, when you go to Vegas, how many times do they shuffle the cards? Just once? No, so what do we want to have? We want to have multiple shuffle. We want to have multiple shuffle, and here's how, how do we do multiple shuffle? Let's do A, B, C, D, E, F, and we will do multiple shuffle, and the deck has size six, and we want to do it twice. So can you predict what this will be? What would happen if we shuffled that once? It would be what? What would the order be? A, D, B, E, C, F. And then what would happen if we shuffled that? A, yeah, actually we can look up on the screen. We can look up here, can't we? Is it the shuffle of this? So that would be A what? A, A, E, D, B, C, no wait. A E D C B F. Did I say that right? A E D C B F. Yeah. So can you write multiple shuffle? Come on, let's write multiple shuffle. Question? question? Shuffle, um, rather than having size be a parameter, can you just do length? Yeah. You could. And our author is, so the question was, instead of having size be provided by the programmer, you could have, you could call length on it. And that's our author is very concerned about performance okay. because that big theta event. Actually, we're going to do a, we're going to do an algorithm later on. We're going to do some functions later on where where, where we are going to be concerned with performance. Okay. And so he's thinking, well, let's not, yeah. But that's a, but you could. The answer is yes. You could definitely do that. And and for these small examples, you probably couldn't tell the difference in the run. You know, well you I, you couldn't. But anyway. All right, but anyway, so, so um, that was a good question. Okay, 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 so let's define multiple shuffle. How many parameters does it have? Three. Three, and so what are they? So lambda what? Deck size. Deck size and let's call it times. <coughs> so what's the base case?
Yeah. In, in which case we return the deck. Is that good? So if, okay, so if equals times zero, do what? Deck. Just deck. Mm -hmm. But if it's not zero, then what do we do? Now what do we call? Uh, yeah, yeah, we call multiple shuffle. Oh, no, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we call, so what com comes next? Multiple shuffle, and the first parameter is what? No. Shuffle, deck, what? Okay, good. So multiple shuffle, and the first parameter is shuffle, deck, size, right? And then the second parameter is what? There's three, how many parameters are there to multiple shuffle? Mm -hmm. Three, so the middle one, the next parameter is what? Same, Same size? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the third parameter is what? Minus one is minus times one. Yeah, minus times, so size minus times one. Does everybody see how that worked? Okay, you guys. Now, sorry, I, uh, I'm just now getting to this on the day that you have to do a homework assignment for it, but here is a demo of MAP. Check it out. What happens if I do SQRT of 5? SQRT is built in. What happens if I do SQRT of 5? Yeah, square root of 5. 2.23606799479979. Yeah. And what happens if I do this? If I do SQRT of, let's say I want to take the square root not just of 5, but of 5, 6, and 7. So suppose we do 5, 6, and 7. Now, first of all, do you think this is going to work? Why not? Why won't this work? Well, that's not, that's true, but that's not why this particular one won't work. Because what's it going to try to do when it evaluates that, when it evaluates the parameter? It's going to try to take, it's going to try, well, okay, what's the EVA, yeah, actually, we should, maybe we should talk about this. Um, here, let's go to the camera. So what's the, what's the thing that controls the uh, bottom pane? The, what's the loop called? Read, read, eval. read, eval, print. Now here's the question. Now that middle thing is eval. So it reads a function, right? And it does eval on it. Now here's my question. How does, how does scheme, how does lisp eval a function? And you think, because it actually does, it has to do two things. What does it do? How does it, how does it eval, how does a lisp eval a function? What does it assume? The sh what does it assume is in the parentheses? The first thing. The first thing is, procedure. is a procedure, right? And then it assumes that what? The rest are parameters. So what does it do? So what's the first thing it does? What do you think? Hmm? No, it doesn't reference the procedure first. It doesn't do that first. It has to do something else first. What does it have to do? Yes, it does. it's recursive. It has to eval the parameters. Are you with me? So it evals the first parameter, it evals the second parameter, it evals the third, third parameter, and then once it evals, and then what, do, what, oh, those are all functions. So what do those functions do? What do those, what does a function always do? Return. Returns a value. So it returns those values from those evals. Are you with me? And then, and only then, what does it do? It applies that function to those parameters. So does everybody see that it has to eval the parameters first? Are you with me? Okay, good. So now let's go back to our demo. So look, what does that mean? 
what's the first thing that the eval is going to do when it gets when it, it's going to read parentheses sqrt paren five six seven paren paren, and wha, what's the first thing it does when it evals this? It evaluates a parameter, and what's it going to do when it sees the five six seven? It's going to do what? It's going to error. It's going to error. It's yeah, it's going to error because five is not a procedure. See, it's given five. Oh, that's not a procedure because this here is trying to eval the parameter. Are you with me? It evals the parameters first. Okay, well, wait a minute. If it won't work that way, maybe it'll work this way. SQRT, maybe it'll work. See now, how do we, so how do we prevent the evaluation of, yeah, it's with single quote, right? Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven. Which we saw was actually an abbreviation for this. Quote, five, six, seven. See, it's actually an abbreviation for that, all right? So, but let's do quote, five, six, seven. And now, it's not going to try to interpret the five as a parameter, because it's gonna, are you with me? Is everybody with me? And that's what quote does. But now what's gonna be the problem? I think we're gonna have another error, right? Because what does SQRT expect? It's a contract violation. What does SQRT expect? It expects a number, right? And it, we didn't give it a number. What did we give it? We gave it a list, and so it can't do it. Too bad. But now, what comes to our rescue? Map. Now, map comes to our rescue. Now, what we can do is, if we want to apply one function to several items in a list, we can map SQRT to the list um, five, six, seven. Are you with me? And now, can you predict what this is? Yeah, square root of five, the square root of six, and the square root of seven. So it gets mapped, that function gets map, mapped to each one of the items in the list. And now your question was, I think the question that you asked at the beginning of class was, what map does, because what you have to do for your homework tonight is write my map. Mm -hmm. So now, is that, are we good? Do you see what you have to do? And by the way, and by the way, here's, here's another example. Here is an example of a, of a uh, function that takes another function as a parameter, because what is SQRT? It is a what? Yeah, it is a function. So look, you can map any function. Look, what can you predict what this is? Map, here's a function, lambda. Because what does lambda do? It's a function that does what? Returns a function. So here, let me do. Let me do. Let me say lambda, lambda x. Okay, and this lambda x is going to be less than x six. Now, does everybody see that that is a function? Parentheses lambda, parentheses x, parentheses less than x six, print print. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a function. And what happens if I apply that to five, six, seven? Yeah, true, false, false. Now, is everybody with me on this? You see how that, how every, isn't this neat? Uh, this is just, this is just elegant. It's nice. Okay, now, next uh, function that we're going to demo is called uh, reverse. Actually, there's a built-in reverse. So if, if, if we reverse A, B, C, D, obviously what is reverse going to give us? DCBA. But because it's built in, we want to do my reverse. Okay? So now, um, in order to write my reverse, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do this in two steps. Okay? We're going to start with we're going to start with a function that we're going to call add to end. Now watch this. Add to end. 
um, quote, and the list, A, B, C, D, and then X. Now, can you tell by the name what add to end X is going to do? Yeah, so what gets, is it will add X to the end of the list, and so what will get returned? A, B, C, D, X, yeah. And what's the base case? Add to end, what's the base case? Hello, what's the base case? Empty list. Empty list. Is everybody good? And what will that give us? Boom. Yeah? Okay, so now how in the world are we going to do, to do add to end? Well, okay, we'll go up to the, take a break here from the demo. So here is the concept behind add to end. If we do add to end, quote, A, B, C, D, X, then the question is how do we do that? So now what is the car of a, B, C, D, it's A. What's the next thing we're going to ask? The cutter is what? B, C, D. Are you with me? So here's the, the cutter of A, B, C, D is B, C, D. So tell me, how do you use the car and the cutter of the first list to make progress to adding it to the end. Well, yeah. Yes, you have to break, that's what we're doing. We're breaking it apart and putting it together, but how? I mean, because do you see that BCD is, BCD is a shorter list than ABCD. So what, so how could we approach this? Oh, you're going to write, okay, so you would add to end the what? The cutter, cutter the cutter, yeah, how's that going to work? Did, um, reverse the list we have, then start a new list with X and keep adding things. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, here's, here's the thing. We don't want to use reverse because what we're going to do is we're going to, we're trying to work on, we're trying to work we're trying to write my reverse using, this. using add to end. Okay. So the whole idea is how do we write my reverse to do what reverse does? So we don't want to use reverse in our solution. See what I mean? This is an exercise to write. So you're going to add a to the end of well, Yeah, yeah, say it again. So, so basically what, well, no, no, no. You're going to add what? No, not going to add A to the end of X. How, how now, if car of ABCD is A and cutter of ABCD is BCD, and that's the shorter list. So what were you going to say? Would you cutter it down until D is just by itself and then comes D and X? Yeah, but don't think of all the way down to itself. What do we do with the car and the cutter? Well, I mean, when we did add to end, when we execute add to end, yeah, we did it, when we did it add to end, quote, ABCDX, what, what did it give us? It gave us ABCDX. But how are we going to get X to the end? I think, yeah? Okay. Yeah, th yeah. See, this is where it just has to click. Well, look, you've got B, C, D. Do you see that what we're going to do? Add to end is going to call itself recursively, right? It needs to call itself recursively with a what? With a smaller. It needs to call itself recursively with a smaller list as its first parameter. Are you with me? You have to keep on adding the first 
back in because you're not actually removing it. Yeah. But what's the recursive call going to, actually, this is not going to be tail recursive. This is going to be very inefficient, but let's. But what's going to be the recursive call and add to end? Here, what's, it, what's, what's, what are you going to call add? The recursive call of add to end is going to, is going to be what? It's going to be add to end. It's going to be the, yeah, it's going to be the cutter of list. Yes. Yeah. So here, so, so if you do add to end BCDX, what do you get? I mean, we assume that recursively that will give us what? Uh, sorry, if you do add to end quote BCD quote X, that's going to give us BCDX. But then, what do you have to do to that to get? Yes, you have to. You have to put the a. You have to cons the what? The car of the list into the add to the end of the of the cutter of the list to x. Ah, yeah. We just said the whole code. Mm -hmm. Is everybody? Is everybody see how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so here, let's go back to our demo. Now watch. Now let's remember that. Uh, let's remember that sequence. So, so let me clean off our little screen here. And let's go, come up here and scroll down. Okay, now check it out. So we'll define add to end, and there's two parameters, right? List and ELT stands for element. Okay, now can you tell me the base case? Well, I mean, we don't need to check. Well, we don't know. We shouldn't check the cutter list because the list might not even have a cutter. If the list is empty. So how do we say that? Yeah. If null list, then what? Oh, now what is it? Oh, what would it be? You have to cons the element with the empty list. Actually, do you remember when you came by my office and you were wondering where the dot came from? Yeah, you can do list. Right. Yeah, but 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 the way to do this is the way to do this is to the way it's normally done is you cons the element with the empty list. Yeah. All right. Now here, uh, actually, let's pause here because there was a demo. There was an interesting demo here. Look, you guys. I didn't show you this the dot before, but check this out. Does everybody see that if you cons quote A with the list, let's just do B C, what does that give us? A B C, right? And if we cons quote A with the list with the list B, what does that give us? And if you cons A with the empty list, what does that give us? Huh? The list A. Right? Is everybody with me on this? But in every single one of these instances, what was the second parameter in cons? It was a list. Check this out. What happens if we cons quote A with quote B? Now what's the problem? The second element is not a what? A list. So what would you kind of think if you were? Is this, should this, I think this should be an error. And in a lot of Lisp programming uh, community, it's commonly frowned upon. Unfortunately, it's not an error. It gives you this dot. Okay, so we're not going to go there. Uh, using dot, you know, use, you know, because now is, what we have is not really a list, it's a dotted pair. Do you see what I mean? And a dotted pair isn't even a list, so now we're out, so now we're, now we're not talking about lists anymore. So that's why we don't, that's why we don't cons, that's why we don't just return the element.
you know, we have to return a list with the element in it. Okay, so, so that's the one element. But if it's not a one element list, now if there's, it, now, we, now what do we know? At this point, what do we know if we, when we do the false part? What do we know about list? It has a what? It has a? It's not, it's not empty, so what does it have? It has, a, it has two things. What does it have? A car and a cutter. Okay, are you with me? Okay, now it has a car and a cutter, and we can take the car and the cutter of it. So now, and so now, what do we, now what do we say it was? We cons the what? The car of list. So the cons the car of list with? Add to end of the cutter list and the? Element, right. Okay. So there's our define add to end. Okay. And now let's check out my reverse. So just to show you that my reverse is going to work, let's do my reverse quote A, B, C, D. And there it is. And what should be the uh, base case of my reverse, the empty list, right? Okay. So, can you write my reverse? Inefficient version of reverse. This is my reverse. How many parameters does my reverse take? One. One. And so that'll be a list, LST. And what will it do now that we have add to end? What's going to be our base case for my reverse? If null list, you're right. Otherwise, cons. No, 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 no. We, we, we have to cons an element. Oh, what are we going to, how is this going to work? Yeah, what, yes, we're going to cons the car. So, yeah, what is the car of the list? What, when we said my reverse ABC, what was the, what was the car of the, of the list? It was A, right? So, what do we, so we want the cons. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot to show you that if it's the empty list, we just return the empty list. Otherwise, oh, <laughs> I just showed it. <laughs> okay, so otherwise, what do we do? We, now how did add to end work? How did that work? Add to end quote A, B, C, D, X. So what does so what does this add to end do? Add to end takes a list and the thing to add to the list. So what so to add to the end of the list. So what so what is carve list? Over here, what is car list in this example? See, there's the what? The first element. Yeah, there's the first element. And we do what? We add that to the end of what? Mm -hmm. Oops, whoa, I did, whoa, 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 oh my. Hold on. Just ruined my demo. Shuffle. Add to end, okay, and now we're doing add to, and we're saying, we're claiming this is add to end. This is an inefficient version of reverse, which is my reverse, which uses add to end, and what does add to end do? It takes the first element of the list, and it adds it to the end of the what? Of the my reverse of the cutter. So the my reverse of the cutter of the list here, what's the my reverse of the cutter of the list is DCB, right here, right? And then you'd add A to the end of that. Is everybody good? 
Okay, now. But here's my question. What is the efficiency of add to end? Now, we haven't actually done very much of this uh, before. And uh, for those of you who are in the data structures course, we just talked about writing, what kind of an algorithm is this? Is, is it a loop, iterative with a loop, or is it a recursive? Recursive. Yeah, it's recursive. So what, in order to figure out what the statement execution count is, what would we have to do? Write the recurrence and then solve the recurrence. But can you do, but we're not going to do that. I hope we can just understand by looking at the code what the, what the efficiency is. Can anybody tell me what the big theta of this is if the, if the element has n, if the list has n elements? Mm, nope. No, it's not, the answer is not 2 to the n. I would say close but no cigar, but 2 to the n is really not. <laughs> isn't even very close. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's even worse. No. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we, yeah, there's, there's, functions are flying all over the place, and I don't think I heard the right one yet. Wait, wait let's think about what does this do? I mean, Add to end. What does it do? It calls itself how many how many times does it if the list has n elements, what does it have to do? It has to call itself n times boom 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 boom. It's just like as, as if a loop were to go through n times. So now can you tell me what is the efficiency of add to n? Big theta of what? N. Now, is everybody clear on this? I know this is conceptual. We haven't actually mathematically analyzed this, but can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, when it, it calls itself, it, it just calls itself n times, right? And then it just calls itself n times, and then, and, and furthermore, there's only one call. There's no tree or anything, right? It just it calls itself, and then it unwinds the runtime stack. Yeah? So that's n. Is everybody with me on this? Okay. Now, what about my reverse. What's the efficiency of my reverse? So now here's what here here we just saw what my reverse is. It's add to n my reverse curl list car list. But what does it do? It calls itself it calls itself with one less n, right? But then each time it calls that, what does it have to do? Add to n, but add to n is what? N. And then it calls itself with one less. But each time it does that, what does it have to do? Add to n. And then it calls itself one less. But each time it does that, what does it do? Another add to n. So now, can you, do you, can you, can you tell me, based, you know, based on what we've done so far with statement execution counts and recurrences and not n factorial? Which is what big theta? You're right. Which is n squared? Did everybody hear that? It's like it's it's like it's a nested loop, and the outer loop goes n times, and the inner loop goes. Well, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like n times n minus one, and and the answer is it's n squared, big theta of n squared. So this is big theta of n squared to do to reverse. But now look, what. What should it take to reverse a list? How, you know, you ought to be able to reverse a list in what? You should, ought to be able to reverse a list in order n times, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to, so what we're going to do at the beginning of class next time, tomorrow, is we're going to um, see how to make a better, a more efficient version of my reverse. They'll call it your reverse. Yours will be better than mine. All right? Good deal. See you tomorrow. You're right. Okay. Oh, let me start this demo all over again. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Before I start the demo all over again, let me test it. Let me do a little dry run here. This is um, 
Sorry, you guys have to you guys have to be present for the dress rehearsal as well as for the performance. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was this. Okay. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll answer your question in a minute. Okay. Now I tell you what no. I'll just splice this up. Okay. So <laughs> Oh, no, so that means we have to start this over again. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's all right, just keep it rolling. Now, whoever is ed editing this, everything that went before this is gone. Okay, we're going to start from right here, right at the very beginning. <laughs> now, let's pretend we're starting over again. <laughs> okay, all right, ready for another day of uh, formal methods? <laughs> that's going to be hard to keep for me from laughing because... This is take two. <laughs> oh, oh, this I said formal methods. Oh, okay, take three. <laughs> Another. <laughs> okay. Oh my. <laughs> uh. All right. Now, which class is this? <laughs> <laughs>